What is up you guys? So in this one, I'm going to show you how to create a statistical simulator analyzer app using R programming and in particular using the Shiny library and in particular using R Shiny, which is an R package that makes it easy to build R programming apps, as you can see over here in their official web page. What is the main purpose of this app? Well, as you can see, given the times that we live in right now in the COVID-19 era. So this app tells you the most recent statistics related to this disease, namely the current confirmed cases, current recovered cases, as well as the deceased cases. It also tells you how many countries are affected in total out of the 195 countries that there is, it tells you the number of countries that are affected by this disease. There is also a table over here giving you the exact numbers as you can see. So China, for example, it started on, so for example, if we stop this animation for a while, drag it down here till today's date, the 28th of March, we can see that the country with most confirmed cases is the US, followed by Italy, then China, Spain, Germany, France, and so on. The total recovered cases in decreasing order is China, then Italy, then Iran, South Korea, Germany, France, down to Venezuela, and so on. You can also sort by deceased cases and so on. You can also run a live simulation starting from, let's say, the 22nd of January. You could see how cases evolve. So as you can see over here, you can see it's mostly concentrated in China. And as we're approaching March, we can see that Europe is starting to show a lot of cases, along with the US, Asia and the Middle East, South America, you can see here Australia, and so on. So if we pause this for a moment and you hover your cursor along those circular marks, you can get more statistics. Um, in particular, for example, if we hover over France, we can see that the total confirmed cases is 29,155. The total number of deceased cases is 1,600. Now that's on the 26th of March. Let me go to today's date. That is the 28th of March. You can see, oh, there you go. So the confirmed cases is 37,575. Deceased cases, 2,314. Estimated recoveries is 2,155 and active cases is 33,000. So this is what this map offers. Along with the live map, we've got a table showing more properties and attributes. That is the new deceased cases, total deceased cases, new active cases. You can sort by country as well. You can also search the country. So let's say France say Lebanon, Uruguay, Spain, Italy, and so on. You've got some meaningful plots. For example, you've got this histogram over here showing you different cases, such as active, confirmed, deceased, and recovered cases. So this histogram is for all countries. You can select the country that you want. Let's say I'll select France. And there you go. You can hover over to see the different cases right here. You've also got a plot showing you the number of total cases, whether it's confirmed, active, recovered, or deceased. You can plot it in a logarithmic scale as well. Not only this, we've got two more plots showing us the number of confirmed cases per country. Um, you can go ahead and add countries at your own will. So say Lebanon or Canada, um, Italy, oh, we've got Italy, um, Uruguay, you can also select what you want to see. And you've got this plot over here showing us the number of cases per country. You can see it on a per population basis and on a logarithmic scale as such. We've also got a last tab about showing you some information about this app. So it's worth noting that the data set that we're using is right out of John Hopkins Whiting School of Engineering CSSE Center. So that makes it a legit 
source and why is that if we go ahead and enter their website and in particular this interface over here which is really a nice interface i like it a lot it's really informative as it shows us many statistics about the coronavirus disease namely if by country we can read the total confirmed cases the total number of death and the total recovered cases not just that, we have access to a bar diagram that dates back to February 19 until today's date, the 28th of March. So per country, we've got access to this, whether logarithmic or linear associated histogram. Our app is offering more options. It's giving you access to more information and more informative plots, as you can see over here. So yeah, back again, why is this source legit? It's because not only is it out of John Hopkins University of Medicine, but they indicate that the data sources are the WHO organization, so the World Health Organization, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and many other well-known sources. So I published this app so you can access this app, whether you do or do not have RStudio installed, that's not a requirement to run this app on your browser. So I'm currently running it on a Google Chrome browser, as you can see, and it's working well. I'll leave the link down in the description section below so that you can access it whenever you want. So without further ado, let's get started on how to implement this COVID-19 statistical simulator analyzer app on our Studio. Okay, so I have this empty project open over here called COVID-19 Statistical Analysis Simulator. So the first thing I want to do is open a, an empty script as such. Let me make more space over here. I don't need those for the moment. So as you can see, this path is empty and it only contains the r.project file, which is by default. So this is the file by default. Okay. Let's create a main file over here. I'll just save it. It's automatically created over here. And so the first thing I want to do is import some libraries, right? So the first library I'm going to import is the shiny. The second one I'm going to import is shiny dashboard. I might also need the DT, the FS, the web stats, the leaflet, plot ly and the tidyverse run to make sure everything is working and yep now in case you don't have one of those libraries you're going to get an error over here and the proper way to install it is to type down install.packages and pass it the name so for instance if you don't have the shiny library all you have to do is enter this command right here and the same applies to the other libraries. So run and RStudio prompts me to update the loaded package. So one or more of the packages that will be updated by this installation are currently loaded. So I have them on my environment. Um, I'm going to hit no, but that's not going to be your case in case you're installing it for the first time, okay? Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create over here or just hit command shift N as such a file called utils. The main responsibility of this script is, you know, just to point towards directories. So to extract other functions in a, in a good way, I'm going to write a function over here that will help to source multiple files which are in the same directory. I'm going to name the function source directory. That is a function, takes a path. I'll set the recursive flag to false. So in this function, all I want to do is just specify the source directory and specify the correct path to read the files that I'm going to write from. So the first thing I'm going to do is test if the path that I inputted is actually a path, if it exists. So if not, I'll throw in a warning saying that this path is not a valid path. Okay, just get out of this function, right? Um, let me give some indentation over here. Okay, good. Now the environment, I'm going to set it to the parent frame. Okay. And hence the files, I'm going to extract them from 
this method called list that has a function called files. I'll pass it the following parameters. So the path is the one that I inputted. Pattern that I'm going to follow is the following. So all files that end with .r, I'll set this to false. I'll set the full names to true. And recursive, I'll set it to false. Okay. And then I'm going to loop in every file. So a file in the list of files. Okay. I'm going to open a try catch block. So try catch. Pay attention to the parentheses because this could get confusing. So I've got the source, first of all, and I'll pass it a file and the local. I'll set it to env. I'll concatenate the file is sourced. I'll print that out. I'll try this and if there's some error, I'll throw an error saying failed loading the following file and I'll throw the condition. What condition I got from the error. Okay. Now going back to the main, the way I can import this is by saying source with tails dot R run and all seems to be good. As you can see over here, source directory is a function defined globally. So that's my intention over here. So the next thing we want to do is read some data. Well, luckily they've got a GitHub account. They've got a data set over here that they've been using. And a lot of, you know, organizations have been looking into this data set. So over here, I'm going to write a function called download the COVID data. This is my function doesn't take any arguments and I'll call download.file pass it URL and I need a destination file to throw the downloaded contents, right? So for that, I'm going to throw it in. Uh, so over here, I don't have it created. So when it downloads, it's going to create a folder called data and I'll name the file COVID-19 jh as for john hopkins dot zip okay it's going to be downloaded in a zip format and it's this link that i need okay um that's one and two what i want is that after i unzip i need a data path to throw the unzipped data so for that i'm going to throw it in a folder called covid19 master the contents of the unzipped data I'll be interested in the following. Okay. This is the link I need. And finally I'll run unzip. So the unzip has the following arguments. So I need to unzip this, right? Followed by the files that I paste. I need the following three CSV files. So confirm global.csv, death global.csv and recovered global.csv. Okay. This is the names of the files I'm going to create. And those three files will be prepended by the following string time series COVID-19. The name of the parent is data and I'll set the junk. I forgot a comma over here and I'll set the junk path to true as such. Okay. So this does it. Now you need to keep in mind something. This downloads the data once and you need to keep in mind that the data changes with time. So, so John Hopkins updates this data set frequently. So a way to keep up with their update, all you have to do is create another function, call it update my data. And over here you specify, and it's over here that you call this function, right? So you call it as such. Now, if the parent directory doesn't exist data, We'll have to create it. So we'll test first of all, if it exists, if it does not exist, I'll create it. And then I'll call this function. Now, now it's over here where, where I'm going to refresh stuff. Um, why is this thing yelling at me? So first thing I want to test for is if I already have this, if I already have this, if it's already there, Okay, good means I am, I might be up to date, but what if it's there since, I don't know, 10 days ago, 
Well, we can fix this. How? By checking if the time I last downloaded my file up till now has been has exceeded a certain threshold. So let's say T refresh. Let's call this T refresh, okay? And T refresh, I'll set it to half an hour, right? So this is in hours. So over here, I'll find the time difference between the current time and the time I downloaded this file, okay? Now this quantity is not a double, so I'll need to convert it to a double as such. So now this quantity is a double. And over here, I'll need the change time to make sure it's in hours, okay? Okay, looks good. There you go. And if this exceeded T refresh, which is set to half an hour, then I'll download the data again. Okay, that's it. Um, I can just go ahead and call this function as such. Let me run. As you can see over here, the data file has been created and it's a 55.2 megabytes. Whoa, that's a big data set. So it's downloaded. Let me go and check. Okay. So this is the .zip file from John Hopkins. Um, here's the three CSV files that I'm interested in. So now note that if I go ahead and run the file again, it hasn't been half an hour since I last downloaded the data over here. So let me run this again. And there you go, nothing downloaded, okay? Let me set this to zero point, something really small such that it downloads again. Run, and there you go, it's downloading, okay? Let me set this back to 0.5. Okay, perfect, got the data, it's all good. And let me just set this to something really high for the moment because I don't want to keep downloading data over here. I'll set it to 10 hours, assuming this tutorial is not going to take more than 10 hours. Right, so next off, let me read my data. So I've extracted three data sets over here, right? I'm going to put the contents of each one of those CSV files in a variable. So for instance, I'll call data underscore confirmed the CSV corresponding to, so I'll read CSV, what's in this, right? So I need this name over here. And there you go, okay? Same thing for the death global and recovered global. So data, Deceased and data recovered. So let me run this. So this is the data corresponding to, this is data confirmed. We've got data deceased as well, right? And data recovered. Okay, good. Um, I think our studio has a better way of visualizing those data, right? It's over here. So three data sets. I click on each one as such. And we have this nice looking interface over here. So you can also sort the data at any given date. So let's say we want to sort it for the 7th of March, 2020. So the largest death rate 2959 is in Hubei, China. The second one, 233, is in Italy. And the state is not mentioned. The third one is in Iran. The fourth one, is in South Korea and so on, okay? Now let's say I want the latest data. It will turn out to be useful. So the current date, I'll take the as date, I've got the names confirmed, take the number of columns of data confirmed. That's how much I want. I'll pass it the format, month, then day, then let me put a forward slash. So month, day, and a year. Okay, then a change date. Oops, this is a 1T. So change date, pass the file info. I'll pass the, the zip file as such and I'll extract change time. Okay, so that's the date. That's the day's date and the current time. So next, I might need some, you know, evolution data by country. So for that, I'll take the data confirmed and I'll extract, or more formally, I'll take the longer pivot along the name. That is the date. Why am I doing that? Well, let's go back here. I've got the data confirmed and along the date, 
which is this, take the first five from five till end. So one, two, three, four, column five till the last column are dates. So I'll extract that. So five till the last one, that is n number of columns of the data confirmed data set, right? I'll put this on a new line right here. Also, I'll group by province or state, the country, region, the date, latitude and longitude. And now I'll summarize by confirmed cases. That is the sum of values. And then finally I'll remove summary. So run, here's the data right here. So here's the province, country by date, latitude and longitude. Okay. Okay. Good. Next, I'm going to do the same thing for the deceased cases, the same exact thing. So, so there you go. And from the confirmed cases, I'll create the data. I'll create an evolution. How? Well, I'll take the confirmed data over here. I'll join with the deceased cases. I'll ungroup and then I'll mutate according to the date. Okay. I'll arrange according to the date. Then I'll do the same grouping as I did with the confirmed and the deceased data. And then I'll mutate according to the recovered data as such. And then I'll take the longer pivot along the var name with the following attributes. Okay. And finally I'll ungroup run. If we take a look at the data evolution, there you go. So we've got all the information concatenated in this data set, data evolution, right? But that's not all I'm interested in. I'm interested, you know, in a, because as you can see over here, I still need to group by the province and the country. So, and also here we've got groups of fours as such, Paraguay, Australia, France. So a better description over here could be done as follows. So from the data evolution, I'll group by the province and state, and then I'll mutate according to the new value as such. And finally, I'll ungroup running that. And there you go, a better description. Okay, good. Well, that's all I need. I don't need this, nor do I need this, nor do I need this, nor this, nor this. So let me go ahead and remove them. So remove data confirmed, data confirmed sub, data recovered, data recovered sub data deceased and data deceased sub as such run and this is the only data in the environment so now i've got all the data in the data evolution from the first day of the data set until today's date now it would be nice to have another data set that contains only the latest data i don't want to be accessing the data evolution so as you can see here, this data set contains all the data starting from 22nd of January until the 27th of March. Now in my user interface, it will turn out to be useful to use the latest date. So I don't want to be, you know, executing functions on the fly to extract only the latest data. I want to have it there for me that allows for faster interaction. So the way I can do this, I'm going to join a certain population, which I'll be talking about just now. So first by country or region as such. Okay. And what is this population? Well, there's a data set in R called WB that contains data from the World Bank API. So this function downloads the requested information using the World Bank API. We're going to select the country and value attributes as such. So this is the population. So we're going to select the country and value attributes and then rename the population value. Let's throw in some countries as such and some country names that. I'll put it in the population as such and then the number of data countries, which are taken from Wikipedia. Here's the data so that I can append it in the last column of population. So I'll bind rows. And finally, I'm going to remove everything except for data evolution. So I'll remove population. 
because I already used it and I don't need it anymore. I'll remove country names that country names pop and number of data countries. So now I need a function to return the latest dates. So the function is called up to date where I take an input date and I point towards those in the given argument where I'm interested only in distinct dates. I'll go ahead and I'll do the pivot underscore wider. I'll go ahead and pivot data from long to wide. It'll turn out to be easier that way. So I'll point towards those attributes. And then finally, I'm going to filter. Okay. So I'm only concerned with confirmed cases or recovered ones or even deceased ones and also active ones. Okay. So this is the function that will filter my data evolution. So as we said, I want the data latest. So I'll call up to date and I'll pass it the maximum of data evolutions date as such running this got an error. Oh, sorry. This should be a dollar sign. I want the date. Sorry. I was treating it as a matrix. It's not, it's a property of this object. So run again. And there you go data latest and there you go I've got the latest dates over here only the 27th of March which is the latest date if you don't believe me you can go ahead here and access data evolution there you go this is data evolution click on date and there you go this is the latest date let's also say I'm interested in the top five countries so top five countries I can do that using data evolution and I'll filter those that are active, first of all, with date that is the current date. So I'm reading from the current date. And also, I'll summarize the value. That is the sum value as such. I'll arrange according to decreasing or descending order of values. Perfect. And I only want the top five, right? So I'm interested in the countries, right? So select country or region. And last but not least, I'll pull the data. So run, I've got an error. And what is it? Oh, so I need a group by over here. Sorry about that. So group by country or region. So run and there you go. So this is just a warning message. Don't worry about that. So top five countries are the US at the moment, then Italy, then Spain, Germany, then France. Right, so now let's create a file responsible of the user interface. So it's the UI. So in this file, what I want to do is create a function called UI that is a fluid page. So the title of the page is COVID-19 international cases. I'll link as such. So the REL field, I'll put a shortcut icon type. I'll put an image that is a PNG and href is a logo.png. I'll, I'll add this to my workspace in just a second. So now you can pass any styles you want. I'll pass the following styles. Really, you can keep those fields empty, but I'm just, you know, those you have to tweak them a bit. If you're good at CSS, you won't have any problem here. If you're not, just leave them empty. This is just for design purposes. And then the page, which is more interesting, I'll pass it a title like COVID-19 statistical analysis simulator app. I'll put it to the left, 10 points to the left collapsible I'll set this to true so as the fluid type style I'll set it to true and then I want to have four tabs the first one is an overview that is defined by page overview I'll give it a value of also page overview you can put as many tabs as you want I'll put three more which are the following the table the plots and about last but not least I'll put some hyperlinks over here so I'll put my YouTube channel link and the logo. I'll just put a logo over here. So I'll create a folder called www. So this is the file I'm working with. I'm going to have to find me a, a logo. So I don't have any ideas, <laughs> but fear not. Just put an image of myself. There you go. So that I forgot a comma here and 
there you go so this should take care of the design of the UI user interface I'm going to now distribute the UI interface for each of the following four tabs overview table plots and about into four files so source UI forward slash UI underscore overview dot R local set it to true I need three more of those this one I'll call it UI plots this one is a UI about and this one is a UI full table. So that said, I'm going to go ahead here and create a new folder, call it UI. And in the UI, I'm going to create four R scripts. So the first one, I'll call it UI underscore about, save it in UI. Second one, I'll call it UI underscore full table. Third one, I'll call it UI underscore overview. And the fourth one, I'll call it UI underscore plots. Okay, let's start by designing the about tab. So for that, my about page should be part of the dashboard, dashboard page. I'll give it a title that is about, obviously, and a header sidebar. I use the dashboard sidebar, right? And I'll disable the true, the body, I'll create a body just about now. So there you go. The about body is of type dashboard body. Okay. I think I'll go with fluid row. I think I'll put it in a column that is of width, say 12. And the style, I'll just pad by 15 points. That's for the column. Inside the column, I'll put a little box that is of width let's say six, I'll give it a title about style, I'll pad to the right by 10 points and class, give it a H3 header type. I'll fill in a column, some text here, like, I don't know. Something like that, okay a comma over here put in some breaks i'll put a header of h4 so we've got an error here saying the the column width must be between 1 and 12 well we have to pass it the width here let's say the width is something like 12 run and all is good so that's about it for the about dashboard shiny page so at the moment this is how the simulator looks like um the about tab is not that attractive let's try to fix it a bit um so the about tab is not that attractive but it's okay you could fix it we're not we're not emphasizing a lot on the design here okay so yeah you could embed a lot of css over here and try to fix it as you wish so you can also open this app in a browser in my case it's google chrome this is how the app looks like at the moment I've got my logo over here and some information about the project. If I tap on my logo, I get my YouTube channel. So this is my YouTube channel. Okay, so now let's fill in the table. So as we did before, we're going to get the page for the table as a dashboard, as a dashboard page. Give it a title that is table. Header, that is a dashboard header set the disable to true sidebar dashboard sidebar also set the disable flag to true and the body will design it so right here the table is a dashboard body let's start first of all by giving a head to this dashboard body with some style that is of type css We'll open a media, give it a min with 700 points, and then a full table with a margin of 30 points from the top. Okay. Next, as we did before, I'll open two fluid pages. I'll give a header table, and from the time, I'll take the current date with the following format 
day, month, and year. I'll close the brackets as such. I'll pass it the class of box title. That is of style, margin, font size, I don't know, something like 15 points as such. And then I'll open a div and at the output, I'll, I'll give it a tag of full table and a class, call it also full table. Another div that is responsible about the growth rate coloring, put a margin from the left of about five points. And then to design the table, we'll need an unordered list. So those really are topics in CSS, which I'm really not going to go into the details because this is only design. It is known in CSS if you want to build a fancy table whatsoever. You need an unordered list to do so. So one of the ways is an unordered list. And then list the items as such. So the first one will span, say the class is position one. And it's for all the cases between 0 and 10% and so on. So as such from 10 to 20, 20 to 33 and so on till all the cases that are greater than 75 and then break. We'll do the same thing on the negative side. So over here, I'll put a width of 12. So run this and all is good. So in case you're curious to see how this looks like, there you go. It's not really clear in, a, in the app. I'll open it in the browser. And there you go. This is the table we have. Looks good. It's by country. So this is the world. How many total confirmed cases? Oh gosh, half a million. So you can sort this according to total confirmed cases or according to total recovered cases or total deceased cases. You can also search by country, so put France, say Lebanon, got 69 recovered, 8 dead. And here you see two new cases, Uruguay, and so on, you get the point. Okay, let's design the overview dashboard page. So page overview, that is a dashboard page with title, simply overview, with header, that is a dashboard header and a sidebar, that is a dashboard sidebar, and a body, which is the overview body, okay? Next, I'm, I'm really not going to show you the details of the design, I'll just go through them quickly, because I spent a lot of time, you know, designing this, so bear with me here. Uh, and that's not the focus of the lecture. So first we'll start by a head that displays a map, has the following animation button, has an animate container, and the following details, okay? Then as we did before, we're going to open two fluid rows. The UI output is box key figures. This is important for later on. And over here, we've got a fluid row, class set it to details, column with a box, say if with 12 with output set it to overview map the class is map with eight set the style to zero point padding then a column few i output with the four and a style also of zero padding then right here i've got a column say slider input set the label to select date so that the user selects his own date this is going to be a slider with men of the data set I have. That is data evolution date. And the maximum is also maximum date. And the current value is the max. So this guy, I'll set up width to fill in all the page. So 100%. The time format, I'll set it to day forward slash month forward slash year and animate and put a loop to true. Okay, this is of class slider with 12, let's say. So this is how the app looks at the moment. Here's the map, here's the slider we talked about, and here's the countries by region or state. So France, let's say, Lebanon, okay. And the slider is really cool. It shows you what's going on 
by day so you can run this as an animation you also have the option to center the map zoom in um, you can change this to satellite see what's going on on a daily basis you can also check different cases let me set this back to light you can see so the green stands for recovery blue is confirmed and so on it's getting really messy let me remove the confirmed estimated and there you go looks cool so let's see how this looks on a browser um, running this zooming in over here this is a satellite view you can see also the the evolution per state as well of course the, the states that contain data some cities or states are not open for public use for example in Europe I'm not aware of uh, evolution per city it's only in China and in some parts of the state okay kind an NAN over here at the moment yeah because maybe at that time ah, there you go yeah because back then there were no cases to recover from or no one has be has been recovered right so that's why there's an NAN so we've got the overview we've got the table right here we've got the about section now we need to work with the plots now as we did in the previous UI components we'll do the same thing with the plot namely we'll open a dashboard page give it a title give it a header that is the dashboard header disable to true sidebar set it to dashboard sidebar disable to true and body i'll just put in a dashboard body that takes a fluid row two fluid rows actually ui and reads from box underscore case evolution and there you go these are the plots you've got the option to zoom in this is plot ly zoom out and zoom in as such right here you've got some cases number of new cases you can add countries let's say lebanon there you get it let's say uruguay there you have it and yep you can also view this on a logarithmic scale or per population so as this one right here this case is per country and yep right so now let's write some functionality that have to do with how the table gets designed so for that i'm going to create a new folder i'm going to call it sections and in sections i'm going to create a new file call it full table okay so just copy it inside sections as such so over here i'm going to create a first function called get full table data that is a function pass it a group by and the first thing you want to do is read the max of the value new attribute of data evolution next what you'd want to do is from data evolution you'd want to filter according to the most current date and next you take the wider pivot along the var then select the appropriate date along with its latitude and longitude next off we're going to add a row in the table that contains a province state along with the country region with the following population now those you can set them whatever you want but most importantly we're going to start filling up the different rows so for example the confirmed value attribute or value confirmed is nothing other than the sum of all confirmed values right next you do the same thing for the other attributes so for example the new confirmed values is just the sum of all new confirmed values same thing for recovered values new recovered values deceased values 
and newly deceased values, active values, and finally the new active values. Okay. Next off, we're going to group by according to the given input. So whether it's date or I don't know, new deceased values or whatsoever, it's according to the input. And then we're going to summarize again according to the total confirmed values newly confirmed values total confirmed values that is nothing other than now this is a ratio so i'll take the maximum of the population right as the universe and i'll sum the total confirmed values right i'll round this thing up to two I'll be also interested in the total recovered cases and so on. Newly recovered cases, total deceased cases, newly deceased cases, total active cases, newly active cases, and a ratio of total active cases. So the entire population. Now I'm multiplying by 100,000 because the data given to me is divided by that number. So I have to multiply to obtain the correct ratio. Okay, next off, what I want to do is mutate. Now you could really stop here, okay, if you want your data to be sorted and that's it. But you can add more features such as you can mutate according to confirmed new cases. So we'll take the confirmed underscore new and divide that by a difference. Why a difference? Because We've got the confirmed total and the confirmed new. So the difference serves as the total universe of the new confirmed cases. So for a percentage multiplied by 100, you can do the same thing for recovered new cases, deceased new cases, and active new cases. Now we're going to take some edge cases. In case I have an infinity, I'm going to exclude it. Then I'm going to mutate only at those fields that contain a new person. Also, I won't be interested for those values that are zero because they're going to occupy space, which is not needed. And now mutate and finally select from the population and cast it as a data frame. Okay, this should go here. Okay, now next we're going to have to render the table. So for that, we'll call a function render data table. Now this is how it's going to look like. So first I'll get full table data, pass it the country region, then the column names. I'll pass the column names as is from the spreadsheet. So I'll just copy paste them from the spreadsheet. So there you go. Then from the data table, take the data, set the row names to false column names. I'll set it to column names as such escape the false options i'll pass it the list of options i'll put a page length to one order to eight i'll set the scroll along the x axis to true same as that for the y axis if you want any more options you can go ahead and add you can also set the format style so i'll set the region or country to bold and that's about it okay so this is how the table looks like. There you go. The countries in bold. Um, you can search by country. So let's say France. There you go. Italy. Okay. Lebanon. Okay. USA. I think it's the US. Yes. Uruguay. And so on. You can also sort by country. So there you go sort according to the corresponding attributes so according to new active cases or total active cases or newly deceased cases now let's customize the map so for that i'm going to create a script called map and i'm going to need a library called html tools so let's create a function called add label this function takes some data in and creates a new attribute label that consists of the following information. So I'm going to break, then I'll do a table that is of style width that is 120 and each item consists of cases. So for example, I've got the confirmed cases right here. As you can see, I'm using CSS for this. Same thing for the deceased cases. 
recovered cases, active cases, and that's it. So this is the information in the label. It's in this format. Take this information and cast it using the L apply. So it applies a function over a list or a vector and you can pass it in one of the arguments, the fun. So for me, I'm going to use HTML to do this, to apply the function over a list or vector. Okay. And last but not least, I'll return the data. Okay, good. And now I'm going to be using this function multiple times. So the map that I'm going to create, so this is a JavaScript library dedicated for interactive maps. So it creates a map widget using HTML widgets. So the widget can be rendered on HTML pages and generated from R, Markdown, Shiny, or other applications. Now we're here, so things should be good. Um, so we're going to be using this function and we'll add label. We'll use this function that we just created, add label. We'll pass it the data set, data latest, okay? And next, what we'd want to do is define the max bounds, right? So this method restricts the map view to the given bounds. So, so I'll pass it longitude one, latitude one, and say longitude two, what should I pass it? Let's say 180 and zero for latitude two. Next, I'll set the view of the map. So set view as such where I first pass it latitudes and longitude followed by a zoom option. So zoom, I'll set it to two and then I'll add layers control to define the base. Let's say the base groups. So I'll define satellite. So note that here you've got multiple options. So other than satellite, you've got light as well, I think. Yeah, light. Um, we'll stay with satellite and overlay groups. Let's say I pass it the following options. So the confirmed cases, the confirmed, the active. So at first we'd want all those cases to be hidden. So a proper way to do that is using hide group confirmed. Likewise, hide group deceased and active. Next off, I'll add an easy button and that's it. Finally, I'd want to observe. I'm going to use a slider that is adjustable by the user. I'll set a certain zoom level depending on the input. I should pass it the current data, which is the most recent data. And that's it. And also you'd want to use the lay flat proxy overview map. You pass it the data as such clear markers. Every time you move, you move the slider and we're going to add some circle markers over here. So the longitude is minus long latitude is minus lat radius. I'll set it to zoom level over to maybe. So note that you can also go ahead and control the color over here. So you can put in a color of, I don't know, and don't forget the commas when you set the properties. So this is the color of the, of the marker. So if we go ahead and run this app, this is how it looks like at the moment. Okay. So as you can see here, this is how the, the cases update on a daily basis. You get the, the live table over here. So it gives you the statistics of confirmed cases, estimated recoveries and deceased cases. You can search by province or by country. Likewise, over here, you see that the markers increase in size given the, the statistics. Okay. As you can see, it all started in China then we see that Europe is getting affected right here and the U S along with some cases in Africa and diamond princess. We see Russia is barely affected. You can see here the explosion in Europe right here. We put in a light. So this is the app. 
you can see here the total cases being updated. So it all started with, as you can see, the total number of confirmed cases. And this, this, this animation repeats. So once it's done right here, 28 is today's date. Once it's done, it repeats starting from the 23rd of January. So going back up here, we see that the total confirmed cases updating on a daily basis. So this is it. On this sad occasion, I just like to take some time and send some thoughts and prayers to you, to your loved ones and to everyone suffering from this pandemic virus. Just stay safe and abide by the social distancing policies no matter where you live. Try to keep distance as much as possible. Try to stay safe. Try to wash your hands every now and then. And that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions whatsoever, kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. You could support me by subscribing to the channel and liking this video. I'll also leave a link to this app, which is right here. It works with our programming, but you can just run it on your browser. Really, you don't need any R um, studio or libraries on your computer to run this app. I'll leave this link down in the description section. And Really, if you want to support me, just subscribe to the channel and like the video. You can share it as well on social media, anywhere you want. You can share it with your friends and so on. Thank you so much and I'll see you in future lectures.